and listen are encouraged by God's grace by next Sunday the, the message the tapes for the first service will be available if you were not in the first service you must get that tape and be blessed it's titled release your potentials come with me to Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 1 and verse 28 we start from there and go as far as God will help us Genesis chapter 1 and verse 28 you must be here this evening 5 to 7 p.m. it will be powerful first, first of its kind in this time we called it the annual celebration and award night it's the first of its kind you must be here 5 to 7 Genesis 1 28 says and God blessed them and God said unto them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth shall we pray Lord in Jesus name you said we should be fruitful so Lord we ask speak that word again into our lives that will challenge our destinies challenge our potentials and move us and inspire us to be the best you created us to be in life and Lord we move out of this service today to subdue to rule over to dominate to conquer, to overcome, to break through, to succeed. Let that grace flow as your word comes. In Jesus' name. Amen. We're discussing this morning the topic exposing your brain power. Exposing your brain power. God created man in Genesis and says in verse 28 he blessed them he blessed them and said there's so much inside you that you don't know about let me describe it you can be fruitful you can multiply you can replenish the earth. You don't have to be local. You can go beyond your environment. You can feel the whole heart. You can subdue it. You can rule over it. You can have dominion. Now, I've thought so much on this verse. I mean because God's first words to man are very important. Loaded, powerful, and insightful. I mean, the foundation for everything else he will say to man. The thing that gave order to man's life, that gave direction to his life, that gave a sense of purpose and meaning to his life. Those words are powerful and loaded. God was simply saying, you are more than what you look like. There are vast potentials inside you that you need to discover. God was saying, man, challenge your abilities. Take some steps out. Try out some things because there's much more to you than what meets the eye. And I believe God's word to Adam was God's word to us. And it's still God's word to us. Because we were packaged inside Adam when God was speaking those words. And by the way, he had us in mind when he was saying, be fruitful. He was simply saying, there are still many human beings inside you who must come out. So don't die young. Hallelujah. Now, I have, I have attempted to understand what God was talking about. To understand where the potential was and where the potential is in man that God is talking to. That God is describing and I found out that man's unlimited potential is invisible. 
the large part of man's vast potentials are invisible. Because if you look at the physical constitution of man, you know he is very limited. Physically speaking, very limited. Man's physical dimension is limited by time and limited by space. His physical constitution can only survive within time. But there is more to man. There is a part of man that exceeds time. Let me explain so that I'm not flying in the air. This, your physical body, can only survive here on this earth. The physical dimension to man only came after God started time. You know, we started counting the date from the time he created the world. The one before that, you can't measure the date. When was he born? He has no bad day. He was living in eternity, in the dateless past. So, Genesis 1.1 says, In the beginning. It was the beginning of time, not the beginning of God. Mm -hmm. So, God who has no beginning was the one who began the beginning. And it was after he began the beginning that he now created man, especially the physical part of man, to survive only within the context of time. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. So he created the beginning and programmed there should be an end. At the end, he will wipe out this present world, but things will continue. So man is born into this world, he has a beginning, he dies, he has an end. But interestingly, when you read the Bible very well, you will realize that man is, was in existence before he was born. He is put inside his mother's womb and finds expression, grows hair. Then at the end, he expires. But there is still a part of him that goes on living. That part of him lives for eternity. Eternity. So, I'm saying that the vast potential of man, the, the major part of him that God was describing when he said, let us make man in our image, is invisible. The major part of your potential is invisible. When God said to man, have dominion over everything, God was speaking to something more than his physical body. Man was created a spirit with a soul and packaged into a body. The body can't dominate because as soon as the spirit leaves the thing, the thing just dies and turns into dust. So that was not the person God was talking to. The one God was talking to was the one that was formed in God's image. Spirit. So, the part of man that can rule, dominate, overcome everything is invisible. Man's spirit is powerful. Created in the image and the likeness of God. Powerful, awesome, unlimited in its vast potentials. Has the ability to live for eternity. Has the ability to function in the spirit realm. Hear what's going on there. See things that are happening there. Has functions and senses just like the physical body has. Man's spirit has eyes. Has ears. Man's spirit has emotion. Has feelings. is sensitive to information. Man's spirit can relate with God. It's powerful. But then the issue is, why did God have to give him a physical body? Because man's spirit cannot find expression and operate here conveniently without some physical form. So that's why man has a mind. The mind is that conversion point from where his spiritual potential is translated into physical reality. The soul, the mind, is that powerful dimension. So I thought about it and found out, yes, the physical body is limited by time. Can only live during a particular period in time, once in a lifetime. Limited by space, can only be in one place at a time. You know, he says, the Apostle John said, God is light. That tells me a whole lot about God. I believe that the light 
he's talking about is not fluorescent light. I know that. It's not even the light that the sun gives because that one is physical and natural. You know there was light in the Garden of Eden before God created the sun and the moon. And God said, let there be light. It was after there was light that he now created the sun and the moon. One to give light during the day and one during the night. So the light by which they operate in heaven is different from this physical one. It's a higher quality. But light, physical light, was the closest thing that Apostle John could find to describe God. Even that physical one, there's one quality I know about it. There's something they call the speed of light. So if God is light, then imagine the speed at which it travels. And I believe it's faster than physical light. So the spirit of man has the same potential. That's why as soon as he dies, he shows up in heaven. Millions of miles. Because his mind can do that. But as long as that person is trapped in this physical body, it's limited by time and limited by space. Can only be in one place at a time. Now I found out how, how therefore do, does man exploit those unlimited potentials inside him. God gave me mind. I found out that in his mind, which he can consciously operate, man cannot be limited by space or time. In my mind, I'm not limited by space. I am not limited by space. I can travel at the speed faster than that of light. In my mind. How long do you think it will take me to get to Tokyo? to have lunch with the Prime Minister of Japan at the best hotel in Tokyo in my mind. You may have been calculating I will have to get visa and get a flight ticket. And Sorry, I boycotted all of that in my mind. It's the fraction of a second. Be enjoying Japanese cuisine. Now, in my mind, therefore, I'm not limited by space. So in my mind, I can operate in the supernatural. I can operate in unlimited dimensions. In my mind, I'm not limited by time. So interesting. Now I can only be alive today. But in my mind, I can choose to live in the past. And I can choose to exist in the future. I can live 2,000 years ago. If I want. In my mind. Why? My spirit was alive 2,000 years ago. That's the truth. So if I move into that phase, I could be. Jesus made a statement that confused the Jews. When they were saying there's no resurrection, the, the Sadducees, who don't believe that we will raise with the dead rise up. Jesus corrected and said, you people, you don't know the scriptures. That's why you don't experience the power of God. They were asking him about uh, seven people who married one lady and she didn't give birth to children. They were saying, when they resurrect, who will be the wife of the lady? And Jesus said, your ignorance is disturbing you. Because in heaven, they don't marry. Therefore, God is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. Have you not had they called him the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Not the God of the late Abraham and the late Isaac and the late Jacob. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, when I switch over to the realm of my mind, then I switch over into that dimension where I have vast potentials waiting to find expression. And the mind is that thing that helps me to convert those vast potentials into physical realities. I'm, I can live in the past. And I can live in the future. Because in three years time, I will still be alive. Maybe I may not be alive physically. But my spirit and my mind, the same one that is still around now, will still be alive. And I will still know the things I know now and more. So when I switch over to the realm of my mind, I can project into the future. Now, when you discover that secret, you come to the point where God helps you to remove the limits around your life 
and to expose the best that God has packaged inside you for you to fulfill at least within time. God's packaged so much inside you that must find expression. Proverbs 23 verse 7 says, As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. In other words, as loaded as he is, as, as powerful as he is in his potential, until his mind can grasp some of those things from the realm of the spirit, he can't get them. So the limit to which he, he, he succeeds and breaks through and makes progress on the physical dimension depends on how he thinks. As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. The physical part of that mind is the brain. The brain is the part of man through which that powerful mind finds expression. Until today, the brain is still an object of serious research. It contains over 10 billion nerve cells. Nerve cells. Now, the nervous system in the body is the electrical system of the body uh, through which electricity flows. 10 billion of those cells that the different things to flow, different information, all of that. The fax messages, the email, the internet system. The, you, you understand what I mean? Eh? The telegraphic transfer, the television, the radio transfer, the everything of the mind walks through the nervous system. Te over 10 billion cells. I'm not sure, but I think I read it somewhere that the total number of cells there, altogether are about 14 trillion or something. And I read somewhere that if you will build a building that will look like the brain and function like it, it will be many, many stories high and it will be a jungle of wires. There is power in your brain. There is power in your brain. Now, this is a new dimension. Because in church, all we talk about is your spirit. Especially for Pentecostal Christians. My spirit is telling me I change in my spirit. <laughs> I am saying this morning that your thoughts can make or mar you. Thoughts are powerful in the spirit realm. They are intangible physically, but spiritually they are powerful. Strong. They, they determine the course of your life. Now, God is a spirit, the first spirit out of whom other spirits came out. And that God himself is a thinker. God is a thinker. Psalm 29 verse 11, he says, I know the thoughts that I have towards you. So God has thoughts. God thinks. In Isaiah 55, verse 8, he says, My ways are not your ways, and my thoughts are not your thoughts. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. So he thinks serious thoughts. He thinks good quality thoughts. He thinks complicated thoughts. I mean, if, 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 if he, he, he knows you and he knows the potential he has put inside your ears, if, if he runs some of the information in his mind by internet into your brain, your brain can explode. He thinks big thoughts, complicated thoughts. And just look at the human body for God's sake and, and, and imagine the kind of thinking that went into the organization and the planning and the programming and the design and the, and the production of the human body. He thinks. Turn with me to Psalm 92. One verse that's blessed me a whole lot. Psalm 92. Psalm 92. One verse that challenged me. That I should go beyond speaking in tongues to thinking in tongues. Psalm 92. Verse 5. Let's read it together. Are you there? Let's go. Oh Lord. How great are thy works, and thy thoughts are very deep. That verse is split in two parts. 
But there's a connection between the two. How great are thy works? Thy thoughts are very deep. That verse makes it very clear. That great works are products of deep thoughts. Great works are products of deep thoughts. God's great works are products of God's deep thoughts. What he was saying is in Isaiah 55, or what he is saying is simply the thing that makes the difference between me and you. What makes the difference between our results is the way we think. I think higher thoughts than your own. That's why I produce better results than you produce. I think great works are products of deep thoughts. I think nature itself should teach us that things don't happen by accident. If you want to live in a house that just appeared, go and live in the bush. This building was thought out by someone planned before it was produced. It should tell you that results in life and accomplishments are a direct result of our thoughts. The vast potentials that God has. You know we call him omnipotent. Always potent. Full of potent or potential. But God gives expression to that potential by thinking and planning. Great works are products of deep thoughts. If your father is a thinker, and you want to look like your father, then you must be a thinker. You can't afford to be shallow in your thinking. We've got to be deep in our thinking. To increase the quality of your life, increase the quality of your thoughts. We've said that severally. Romans 12, verse 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. Oh, that's verse 1. Verse 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your minds. By the renewing. Of, be, be changed. See what he says in Joshua 1.8. He says, look, use this book to program your thinking. This book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. He says, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then that shall have what good success it has all to do with your thinking your meditation that's the starting point psalm 1 verse 2 but his delight is in the law of the lord and in his law that he meditate day if you think miracles you will see miracles that's what he's saying there's no other books that contain supernatural manifestations of the power of god of breakthrough of prosperity wealth and success like the book he says, if you think science, you will see science. If you think wonders, you will see wonders. Use this thing to program your thinking. I think. That's why you see the miracles. You too think. You will see miracles. Think. Think like your father. Your thinking will make or my you. Now, the devil has used thinking to mar the black man. But God will use the same thinking to make you in the mighty name of Jesus. The reason why you, will, why you will accomplish greater things than people ever accomplished in Africa is because you will think better thoughts. God will give you better ideas, better dreams, superior plans. My ways are not your ways, my thoughts are not your thoughts. His ways are his plans and programs, his methods, his principles. Uh -huh. So if you have access to his thoughts and you think his thoughts, you have access to his ways. Superior plans and methods, principles. Your plans will be superior. They have never seen your kind in the world before. God will accomplish great things through your mind. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let's move on to Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. Someone ran into trouble because his thinking went into trouble. And as soon as he changed his thinking, the situation turned around. Luke 15, you had the story before. Let's read from verse 11. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, 
give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. I'm sure you know the starting point is that something went wrong with his mind. <laughs> something went wrong with his thinking. The man, old man had not died. You said, divide my own inheritance to me now. I don't want you to die. Don't write any will. Will it to me now. I don't want to collect it after you have died. I want it now. You know that's a stupid decision. Verse 13. And not many days after, the young son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with riotous living because his thoughts were not deep enough to sustain the measure of prosperity that he got. He lost it. 14. And when he had spent all, those are proofs that there was something wrong with his head. I mean, you suddenly got wealth and money and material things beyond what you imagined, beyond your, and you spent all. When he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land and he began to be in want. The starting point was his thinking. Verse 15, you will now notice that as things were getting worse, he was devaluing the quality of his thoughts. The harder things got, the lower his thoughts went and his plans went, which is what's happening in Nigeria now. As the value of the Naira is going down, so the value of people's thoughts and plans are going down. Old cars that longest time were put on stones and blocks are being revived. Instead of planning for how to buy the ones that they sell around now. For as far as some people is concerned, they have put the buy in their mind, it is impossible. Things are difficult, things are difficult is in the mind. Okay? He was devaluing his thoughts. <laughs> verse 15 and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into his fields to feed swine and he would fain have filled his belly with the ox that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him verse 17 and when he came to himself he said ah uh -uh. <laughs> now I'm sure you understand where all this change is taking place in the mind in the mind. That was where his breakthrough came. And he said to himself, ah, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. Now, verses 17 to 19, all happened where? In his mind. Because that was where everything went wrong in the first place. He repented. You know the definition of repentance? To repent means to have a change of what? Of mind. To repent means to have a change of mind. If it's not working, change your thinking. If it's getting worse, check your thinking. Everything happened in his mind. He said, ah, uh -uh. You know, for <laughs> obviously he didn't think about this for a long time. He was thinking the wrong thoughts, devaluing his thoughts, reducing his plan, reducing, 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 reducing. Until he came to the point where he even wanted to eat pig's food, they didn't eat him. And then I think one day he was just staying quietly and his brain came alive. The brain he had suspended longest time because he got a wolf money. You know that was how that's what happened. When you get breakthrough that you did not you were not programmed for, the thing suspends one's thinking. When the devil wants to kill a person, what he does is to suspend the thinking, attack the thinking. That's what he does. Uh -huh. So, so the, his, his thinking was suspended. And then all of a sudden he said, Ah, this is poverty. Verse 20. Action. And he arose and came to his father. 
But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and killed him. And the son said unto him, you know that was what he planned. He was following his plan. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servant, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf. Kill it. Let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and he's found. And they began to be merry. <laughs> change of thinking changed the young man's situation. Did it work? I think it worked. The thing, in fact, it worked more than he planned. God will surprise you. It worked more than he planned. More than he dreamt. And you remember I said this last week that Robert Schuller said, Dr. Robert Schuller said, I have found out that great dreams of great dreamers are never fulfilled. They are always transcended. But by the time you get to fulfillment point, God will take you further. It will be more than you were planning for. The father saw him, ran towards him, and then you notice something. The person who was begging for pig food to eat and they didn't give him, all of a sudden now, he has become the center of attraction and celebration. They said, give him a new robe, come on. Then he put a ring on his finger, put shoes on his feet, because he changed his thinking. God will move you from lack to abundance. His brain came alive. That was the difference. Go and kill the fatted cow. And let's be merry. Now the father described the situation in two ways. Which is exactly what describes somebody whose, sense, whose brain is not working. He said for he was what? Dead. But he is now, uh, if your brain is dead, you are dead. If your brain is dead, you are dead. If your mind is not functioning, your life will not work. It's all about what you think as he thinketh in his heart. So he did. He was dead. Now he is alive. Ah. Touched my brain. Because this message actually was for me. I just thought I should share it with you. So that we can go together. Amen. Say, ah, brain. Come alive. He said he was dead. Now he is alive. Then he said he was what? Lost. And now he is found. So when your brain starts working, you will be found. Ah. So his suffering started when his mind began to malfunction. His breakthrough came when his mind began to work right. I think that is the thing Africa needs. We need a change of mind. Because there is a difference in skin color, but doctors have found out there is no difference in the color of the brain. And it's the same number of cells. So the difference between the black man and the white man is only skin deep. It's a shallow difference. But the devil knows how powerful the mind is. That's why he attacked us. And I thank God that in Africa, light is shining into some minds. The glorious light of the gospel of Jesus is bringing a revolution. Anywhere in the world they had revolution before, I mean the major world powers, like Britain and the United States, it was preceded by revival. Now, Africa has become the flashpoint of God's revival. Interestingly, Nigeria is the major point, according to God's prophecies. As the light of God is dawning on our spirits, minds will be opening here. And inventions that the world has never seen, complicated ideas and processes and methods that the world has never seen will be produced from here. That's why they will come. Like they went to search out the wisdom of Solomon. They will come here. 
we have something to say because the spirit of god is flowing into our minds and making the minds to work i love that verse of the scripture in first corinthians 12 2 chapter 15 but we have what the mind of christ Whoosh! the mind that sees miracles where everybody else sees problems a mind that sees a new beginning where everybody else sees an end a mind that sees fruitfulness where everybody else sees barrenness a mind that sees abundance where everybody else sees scarcity a mind that sees a resurrection where everybody else saw death i receive that mind you have to task your brain to develop because it matures just like every other part of you has to mature your spirit has to grow your physical body has to grow why not your mental faculties they need to grow you need to feed your mind and you need to exercise your mind so it can grow hw kenyon powerful man of god with great insight said make your brain work it's in the book signposts on the road to success he said make your brain work he said it will sweat but it will turn you into an envy of those around you make your brain work it's in the mind mental handicap is worse than physical handicap unfortunately the devil has exploited mental handicap to handicap many people mentally a beggar begs not because they are physically handicapped but because they are mentally handicapped there is a worse one than the one you are seeing a worse one than the hand that has been amputated a worse handicap than the leg that's been removed a worse one than the lameness or even the blindness there's a worse one it's in their minds and i just wish god could give me the opportunity to get across to handicapped people and let them know god will heal you and until he does you don't have to write out your life and end your life at the point at which you lost your leg read the story two saturdays ago i think of this mr akin Rolabu, who had an accident was it in 1984 when and lost the use of his hands and legs today he is an attraction he goes on a wheelchair in lagos he has a family has a house has a studio he paints with his mouth puts the brush in his mouth to paint and recently the military administrator approved for him some money and they bought him an electric wheelchair to facilitate his movement he has a family and the government promised to help him to international exhibitions isn't that better than working on the street begging theodore roosevelt was a one-time president of the united states of america he ruled one of the greatest nations of his time from a wheelchair and there were pebble-bodied full-bodied human beings begging and picking on the streets so you understand and find out that the difference is not in the physical body the difference is in the way the mind functions every mental handicap here this morning will be healed in the mighty name of jesus the greatest battles we will fight in life are battles we will find in our mind fight in our minds the first battle man fought and lost in the garden of eden was a problem of the mind second corinthians chapter 11. second corinthians it's the same trick the devil is still playing on man till now second corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. second corinthians 11 and verse 3 says but i fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled eve through the subtlety to his subtlety so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in christ so the major problem of what happened to eve in the garden was a problem of the mind if you read the thing in, at home you can go to genesis 3 and read it and you will see it very clearly after the devil spoke the bible says and when the woman saw that the tree or the fruit was good for food 
and was pleasant to the eyes and was a tree to be desired to make one wise. She had not yet eaten it physically. She had he ate the thing in her mind. How did she know that it was sweet? How did she know it will give it will make men wise? In her mind, she had tasted it. She ate it. The devil tricked her through her mind. Till today, Satan can't dominate a person's life unless through their mind. Second Corinthians 4 4 explains the situation of the, of the unbeliever who has not accepted Jesus. He says, In whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them that believe not. Period. So our greatest battles are battles of the mind. If we win there, we will win in life. And you will win. Every scheme the devil makes to hinder your destiny, God will deliver a superior strategy to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. If till today the devil has not been able to beat God, but God will look at the plan of the devil and walk it into his own and still produce what he wants, then there is no scheme the devil will make that will hinder your destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. It's not failure in exams. Not failure in marriage. It's not failure in business. It's not poverty. There's no scheme the devil can make that will trap you. Because as long as your mind is open to God, God will deliver superior strategies to you. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will get it. You will get it. The mind is the transmitting station that receives signals from heaven. So as long as your mind is open to receive from God, you will receive. Because what I found out is when you have gotten to the end of your own rational thinking, God brings in a superior one. They call it intuitive thinking. That one, if God will explain all the process, God wants to give you the answer. But if he will explain the whole process to you, you will be confused. So he skips many steps. And just delivers the answer into your mind. You want to go and visit someone. Suddenly you are feeling like and thinking like the person won't be home. And you feel it so strongly, you sit down. The next time you see the person, you ask, the person was not at home. You see, God just dropped that in your mind direct. Because if he was going to explain to you why the person was not going to be at home, he would just belabor the point. We call that intuitive thinking. There are many answers you will get. Because of the spirit of God that is inside you, that the natural man will not have access to. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things that God has proposed for those who love him. First Corinthians 2 verse 9. Verse 10 says, But these things hath he revealed unto us by what? By his spirit. That you may do what? That we may know the things that are freely given to us. Ah, you will succeed. There is no generation in your family that succeeded the way you will succeed. None. Because there was none that thought the way you are thinking. None. Why was the wisest person that lived the richest in his time? The thing follows thinking. Period. Wisdom is the key to riches. To dominion. To rulership. By me, kings reign. And princes decree justice. How do you release your mind potential? Just go through that three points quickly. To release your mind potential, number one, the number one key is the new birth. You must be born again. If your mind will work, function very well, you must be born again. And the first repentance you have to do, first change of mind, is a, just making up your mind to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior because you just have realized that you can't never fulfill your destiny until God shows up to you. Your receiving and transmitting station is through your brain, your mind. If you are not yet born again, you can't hear God. If you don't hear God, you will hear the devil. If God is not directing your life through the thoughts he supplies into your mind, the devil is the one who will be in control of your life. Simple. So just submit yourself to Christ and be born again. This is my testimony. That after I got born again, my brain began to work. I was dead, but now I am alive. I specifically requested that prayer point from him. Jesus, increase my IQ level. 
increase my brain power and I just found out the thing began to function like a computer began to walk right think right and lift me up make a way for me it's important so get born again <laughs> to repent means to have a change of mind so, to repent from adultery is simply a change of mind thinking right eh? if you are going far by the time you become the president of Nigeria if you are going far or as a lady by the time you become the wife of the president the first lady of Nigeria just imagine it if 40 men have slept with you and then they are boasting by the time you become the first lady uh, I've been there before just think that's all and then change your mind your destiny is too glorious than for you to be submitting your body to just anybody to sleep with period why won't I commit adultery I have emotions just like any human being I'm attracted to the opposite sex why won't I commit adultery I look at this big thing in front and I ask myself which one will you choose Sam it's your choice you become an international minister success motivator that God has shown you holding seminars across Africa and around the world flying around in your private jets and in your private helicopters which one will you choose being the friend to presidents around the world and ambassadors and great men and women which one will you choose being sent for from Aso Rock to come and give advice to the president having the governor call you on phone and come for prayer so that you can release grace on his life or sleeping with a woman for four minutes it's just a thinking. It's a change of mind. So, get born again. It's the wise choice. Your brain will come alive. Now, when I see some ingenious unbelievers, I mean, genius of an unbeliever, cocaine dealer, powerful musician, dangerous but wealthy area boy or area father what it just tells me is the devil took this mind with all the potential and his pe- those are the people I want to get saved fast because I know as wise as this guy was to beat all the rules and everything he gets born again and God gets control of this mind and puts the correct thoughts there this person will accomplish great things for God have you noticed that? get born again the second thing study 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 that is mental exercise study there are three different kinds there that I've listed number one secular education secular education by all means if you can get it get it but please, if you are from this church and you are going to school to get a degree, please understand the purpose of the degree so you can get the best out of it. The paper they will give you is useless. It's not the thing that will really help you to maximize your potential. It's not the paper. What secular education does is to sharpen your mind so that when you meet real life situations, you can formulate strategies and answers around the thing and beat the devil hands down. That's what education is supposed to do. In Nigeria, unfortunately, it is to collect pali, pali that has become useless and can't even get a job. So what is the use? So it's time we get back to get the real thing out of education. Sharpen your mind. To be able to produce solutions when you get out. Because there is a wide gap between the rubbish and junk they dump in your mind in school and the real thing you will meet in life when you get out and many people who are carrying certificate bachelor from bachelor and spinster they become master and mistress to phd and unfortunately a, a phd holder is complaining i've been jobless for four years the joblessness is not a function of lack of job in the economy it's because the head is not working I'm sorry, but that's the truth. 
what is the use of all the years you spend in university if you can't formulate something and find with some basic thing and get out and work? That was the lesson of Genesis 1. Learn how to start with what you have. That is the whole story of Genesis 1 and Genesis 2. So sec get secular education. Number two, get into the word. Get into God's word. If you really want your mind to be sharpened and to work well, get into God's word. Second Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word. One hour of jesting and cracking jokes, one hour of complaining and murmuring is not adding to your life, it's taking from your life. One hour of negative confession and pity party and, and, and sympathizing with one another is not adding to you. Take that one hour and sit down and, and brush your mind with some miracle stories from here. Catch some insight, some revelation. Get, get into deep thinking. Uh, can you imagine? The question I just asked myself is, Almighty God, the creator of the ends of the earth, the all-wise God, omniscient God, wanted to write a book to instruct man, and he wrote a book as small as this. I think God should have written more than this. If God really wants to write a book, oh, don't you think so? So, the fact that it is as small as this should tell you that this is a computer that has unfathomable information coded inside. So, when your spirit is activated, your mind is activated, and you settle down with it, with the Holy Spirit who inspired those who wrote it, then he begins to bring out the information he filed inside. If you are conversant with the computer, I'm sure you know we file in information. You take chunks of information and put a file name. The thing disappears. All you see is the file name. If you click on that file name, so many things now come out. Uh, these are file names. Every verse and every word. Every verse and every... What have I been doing since morning? I've been opening the files to you. You understand? That's what I've been doing. So if you, he says meditate in the day and night. If you don't, you are cheating yourself. Yeah. Information is passing you by. Direction is passing you by. Methods and plans and strategies are passing you by that will add to your life. Get into the world on a daily basis. Get into the world. Number three, true reading. I mean reading general books now. Reading general books. Sharpen your mind. Associate with Men who have gone into thinking higher thoughts, use that to sharpen your mind. Sharpen, exercise your mind through reading. Daniel was supposed to be a slave in Babylon. He became a star, a president of presidents. Why? He was the most learned. Thank God for all his friends, but he was the most learned person around. Because in Daniel chapter 9 verse 2, he said, I, Daniel, learned by books. Land, but he was reading the prophecies of Jeremiah, and insight came to him. It's about time for Israel to go back from Babylon to their own country. He was reading. I land by books. And in Second Timothy chapter four, verse thirteen, Apostle Paul was telling them, telling Timothy, "Look, the books that I forgot at to us, make sure you bring them to me." Apostle Paul was learned. 2 Timothy 4.13, he said, The cloak that I left at Troas with Carpus, when thou comest, bring with thee, and the books, but especially the parchment. Apostle Paul was a learner and a reader. So when God was to reveal, when the Holy Spirit was to package information and reveal to man, he looked around for a mind that could assimilate and contain this in and translate in writing. It was the mind of Paul that was developed in Noah to take half of the New Testament. Deep, powerful things that will be the foundation for the church for many generations to come. But he was a lawyer. He was a lawyer trained under Gamaliel and a book reader. Readers are leaders. Today, a reader. Tomorrow, a leader. Today, a reader. Tomorrow, a leader. Because 
reading will quicken your thinking. When you run ahead of your generation in your mind, eventually you will run ahead of them in life. And they'll have to follow you. It's in thinking. It's in thinking. Superior thinking. So be a... I read voraciously. I read voracious. I read... Feed my mind. I read... Jeez. It is reading that has made me through the power of the Holy Spirit. Because what I read in school has no bearing to what I'm doing now. Except if the Holy Spirit gives interpretation to the things they taught me in school. Theory of structures. Except if it be become the theory of human beings in the ministry. If it helps you to find a connection, maybe it can be useful. But I read and I have read. And I've only started. I'll read and read and read and read. Now, if Psalm 92 verse 5 is true, that great works are products of deep thoughts, I know God will produce great works in my life. I know. Think deep thoughts. I think with the greatest minds around. I think. I think in my field. I study. I want to be an expert. I want to be an institution in my field. An example. A role model. I read. If you are a member of this church, you must read. Habba. You must read. Amen. You must read. Have you read the Success Power Mini books? If you haven't, you haven't started. Bishop was preaching recently and he was saying, he went to the United States a few months back, he was going to preach, he had the mini books with him. And he was going to preach a message on desire. He brought out the small mini book from Success Power Broadcast and read the one on desire and exploded at the meeting in the United States. A bishop from Nigeria here. Now, if a bishop is reading it, what's the issue with you that you have not been able to read it? That is the different thing that is making the difference between the bishop and the you. And you. He has enough wisdom to go where the information is when he needs it. The person who wrote it does not matter. We didn't read the book that Bartholomew wrote, the disciple of Jesus. I don't know why. But Luke was a doctor with a sharp mind for details. He was not amongst the twelve, but he wrote two books. The most detailed accounts of Jesus' ministry here and that of Apostles after. Thank God for Peter a fisherman. Later, he wrote because after they had worked with Jesus for three and a half years, their minds were sharpened. God will sharpen your mind. Yeah. This church is a church of miracles of minds that have been blessed by God in the mighty name of Jesus. The last thing that will sharpen your mind is association. Because Proverbs 13 20 says, He that worketh with wise men shall be wise. The number one kind of association is working with God. Through prayer, through worship, and study. When you work with him through prayer, through study, you'll be dropping things in your mind that are beyond human comprehension, but they will move your life forward, and your thinking will be superior to that of your contemporaries. The second level and dimension to association is that of other human beings. If you walk around with people who think that it's difficult to build a house now in Lagos, there's no, it will be difficult for you to build one. They work with people who think that 10 million naira is a big amount of money. It will be difficult for you to get it. Work with the wise. Work with the success. Don't criticize people who have succeeded. Don't join them. Please, it's not my habit. So anybody who works with me should not make it a habit. You've never had me criticizing holder ministers before. No. I, I'm not stupid enough to do that. Because even if a man can't write his name, if he has better results than you, there's something he knows that you don't know. Period. Everybody has their weaknesses. You have yours. And you see, my own is big enough for me to sit down and settle with. I don't have time for that of somebody else. I'm trying to solve my own problems and move my life forward. So don't sit down criticizing people. I don't, especially those who are ahead. I don't. Especially, uh, except if the person flagrantly, is, it is clear that the person is using the devil's power to get ahead. Then I become opposed to the person. But if it is the same God we are calling, I'm for you. Amen. 
Walk with wise men, you will be wise. Walk with successful people, you will be poor. You can't walk with rich people and be poor. They will rub off on you somewhere. They will expand your dreams and your plans. They will intercept your plans when you are going to enjoy yourself and tell you it doesn't work that way. Why don't you try this? You will succeed. I said you will succeed. Time for a change of look. Let this be your assignment on a daily basis. Your brain should not sleep the way it was when you woke up. Never. Not in one day. Some fresh insight somewhere must enter into this brain, activate it, and improve it. And I'll tell you, out of this church will come stars. The information you are getting now, Jesus said you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. That's